Hi, this is Angela Rasmussen from the University of Utah Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I'm going to go over another example with parallel configuration. Um, this time we're going to do a little bit more of a design, um, so it's going to just be thinking about it a little differently. So in this we want to actually determine the value of C for which the IL of T will exhibit the fastest smooth response. So you have to determine from that what does that mean. So we have the three options. We have critically damped, underdamped, and overdamped. Critically damped is going to give you um, an, a smooth response. So if you want the fastest, typically you're going to want to go to the one that's going to spike up. Um, and so that wouldn't be critically damped. And so we want to do critically damped in this case. So that means that we know that we want an actual alpha equal to omega naught. So the first step is usually to find like, well, what configuration? Do we have series or parallel? So we're gonna look at this in the final state. And so in the final state, we're gonna redraw the circuit and we're going to um, take out all of the elements and then determine what is going on with the switch. And in the switch in the final state for this one, it will be, um, let's see, the switch closes at t equals zero. So we're gonna have a switch closure here and then our inductor and our capacitance are going to be located here. So we're gonna leave those open to determine the configuration and then also to determine your resistance RTH. So with that, you can see that these are in parallel, hopefully. Um, the top of this is going to be um, the same color, and then the bottom will be a different color. So we usually, I like to label the top one A and the bottom one B, and then for the RTH, we need to um, remove all of the independent sources. So Removing an independent source, that means that the voltage will go to a wire. And so your pathway is going to go to this, and then it's going to split. And then we're going to have a separate pathway here. So this is going to mean that all of these are going to be in parallel. So you'll have one over one over six plus one over six plus one over eight. And so um, it's gonna be 24 over 11. So now we need to know like, okay, we, well, we identified we were in parallel configuration. So with parallel configuration, we know alpha and alpha is one over two RTHC and C is our variable we want to find. And then this is one over the square root of LC. So in order to get rid of, which is that? Omega naught. Um, in order to get rid of that square root, we are going to want to square both sides. So when we square both sides, we are going to have um, 1 over 4 RTH squared, and then a C squared is equal to 1 over LC. So if we bring the c squared over to the other side, so multiply this by c squared, that will reduce this down to c, and then we can multiply this side by l, and so we have now an equation with just the one unknown c, because we know l and rth. So c will be equal to l over four rth squared, and then l was, five milli, and then RTH we found is 24 over 11, and then it's squared. So that gives us a 0.26 millifarad.
So this design gives us the value of C that is going to give us um, the smoothest response. Um, and it's typically the, you know, fast and smooth. And then you have the one that is just fast. Okay. So now we want to know from this value what um, IL of T equation will look like. So for that, we're going to go back to each of the steps. So we identified we designed this to be critically damped. And so that makes it easy to know, like, OK, we're going to just keep it critically damped. And we have um, our three circuits we're going to need to find. So I'll do this three times. One, two, and three. And on each of these, I'm going to remove the switch, because I'll redraw that, and then the capacitor and the inductor. And then um, I need to get the equation sets. And then also, I want to note that the initial is always found at t equals 0 plus. And so with that, I need to find t equals 0 minus to determine the value for VC and IL. Oh, that is a plus. So that's the plus side. So um, I know the critically damped, and so I'm going to grab the equation set for critically damped in parallel. And with critically damped, I need to know the IL, I infinity. Just put it down here. I need to know IL, I infinity, and then VL of 0. So for t equals 0 minus, I'm finding IL and VC, and it will have sat there for a long time. VC was not labeled polarity-wise this time, so I can choose an arbitrary direction. I just need to keep it consistent in my zero plus. I need to have the same direction. Same thing with IL or IL was labeled, so IL needs to stay though the same direction, so it will be there. The switch is open first, so this will be an open. And so from this, there's no source on the right side, so VC will be zero. And then IL is going to be the current being pulled into this direction, um, and then we'll go through the two six amps and then through here. So I can say with this being zero, I can say that that current is nine minus zero over the two resistors in parallel. So I can either do nine over six plus nine over six equals um, IL or I can just do that those two in parallel will be 3 ohms and 9 over 3. So IL, either equation, will give you um, 3 amps. So this will be 3 amps. For right after 0 plus, it will be closed. And this will be 0 volts. And my VL of zero then will still be zero, which because it's in parallel with that zero volt source. And then IL of zero will be the three amps. So now I need to know the final. And in the final state, again, it's closed. This will be a wire and this will be an open. And with this, um, as zero again, the current going through this branch will be the same that I found before of three amps. 
Now I need to know if there's any current here, and I see that it's in parallel with a wire, so it's gonna be zero over eight, which will be zero amps. So IL of infinity is also going to be three amps. So because IL of zero and IL of infinity is the same, that means that they're gonna be zero for um, B1, and it will also be 0 for B2 because this is 0. So that makes this equation easy that IL of T is always just going to be 3 amps. And then again, I put the U of T, or you can say it's 3 amps for t greater than or equal to zero. So those mean the same thing. So that is my solution for this is just three amps. All right, thanks for watching.